Actually, I would like to start with you. I want to talk specifically about the art of transitional moments because there's some moments in here, like where they're talking about the legend of Bone Lake, and then you, it's an intense moment, and then you transition into a, a fish getting gutted. And then there's a moment where somebody's goods is hanging out and you transition to a sausage being eating, uh, eaten. So uh, I, I'm curious about those moments and like how you kind of like navigate the feelings of that. Or the... Well, thank you for noticing those moments in my baby film. Um, but I always, whenever I go and do my own breakdown of a shot list and a script, um, I'll go ahead and do a whole transition pass. And so that's something I kind of brought into it. You mentioned the sausage moment where I thought, what is the best moment of them talking about this <laughs> to then someone eating this sausage and yeah. how can we add something to it? And so it was something of me sitting by myself for many hours <laughs> thinking yeah. about those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was very effective and funny. The sausage one especially, I laughed out loud <laughs> watching that. Um, and I, without getting into spoilers specifically, I, I'm just curious about like how you map out, because there's so many secrets here, there's so many mind games. Like How do you two work it out in such a way where you want to lay down a path where maybe there's something going on with you and you're, you're, you're the person that shouldn't be trusted, but you also want to kind of reel it in so it could be the other feeling as well. I think that's, you know, that's the essence of the craft. Like it's, it's to find truth and understand those situations and where you're going to go. Even the sausage thing, I was like, <laughs> if, he, if you think about it, rationally, it's like, why would he do such a thing? But if you trust, you know, the vision of the director and your partners and you find in yourself, in the character, something to justify that, mm -hmm. then you're going to find it. And that's when, it, that's when it gets us. That's when it makes it, when it's real. When, it, when we really are doing that um, in, a, in a real, in a truthful way. Otherwise, it's just, it just becomes something that, and, and you, it doesn't get noticed. As, as it does. So that, that was the challenge in this film. There's so many moments, so many absurd things, and I think you just have to dive in and trust your team and and bring truth to it. When, when it comes to um, all the wisdom, there's a lot of wisdom in here. Like, I clocked so many moments, like, such as the, um, the death of artistic expression sequence at the very beginning. Shortly following that is just this moment where it's like, you know, Whatever is going on in your head, whether you get in trouble or it's a mistake, just do it and let people be upset. And so I'm just curious as actors, do y'all hang on to the wisdom that is part of the projects that you're in? I, I do. I think I, I think from every character I've played and from Sin especially, there's always something I learn and take away and apply to my, my personal life. Um, I think with Sin especially, there there's something that I really loved about who she is as, as in terms of like her confidence and the way that she's, you know, she views the world through this like childlike wonder and she's so bubbly and fun and, and that's so not me. <laughs> um, so it was nice. I remember during our you call. You are fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember even during our callback, I was like, it's like, it's this much right on zoom. And I'm like clenching my fist. I'm like shaking. I'm like sin would not do this and would not do <sighs> And so there was something that I was able to take away just from certain moments um, that, that, yeah, it stick with me. I think, the, of course, there's the knowledge. There is the, you know, um, the training you bring in and all that. But I specifically, personally, I love the mistakes. You know, I love to go wrong to, to then find the right one. And I think this kind of films is exactly where you can do that mm -hmm. and play with that more than anything. So there was a lot of space for us to go as far as we could and say, okay, let's just take <laughs> it back a little bit, but uh, but let's explore and play with that. And like the sausage, you know, that's <laughs> a great example. Yeah. Um, and the ending, you know, there's so many moments that you're like, oh, I didn't see this coming, but I love it the way, you know, the way it's going. Yeah, and I think too, just talking about the moments of truth and the real talk within the absurdity of this movie, just an example where there's a scene where they talk about using vibrators yeah. and masturbation. Sex and what do you yeah. do when you catch your partner masturbating without you and how does it make you feel? And we kind of wanted to approach that from both a male-female partner perspective because everyone has feelings about it and they're both right at the same time. And so kind of taking that wisdom of everybody can be right and wrong at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
It was definitely very authentic. I'd, I'd kind of be nervous to watch it with my wife because we both get very conversational <laughs> when we watch it and, it and it gets to that point. I think we've all been there where you're, you may be with your significant other and then you're like, do you think like that? Like it, but that's the power of the film too. So, so it makes a good film. Yeah. yeah. If you're yeah. talking about it. If you're not talking about it, then we did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you just put all that truth in your back pocket and you look for the right project to put it in or is it a little more organic than that? Um, I think it's a collaboration. I think that with this script, the script had a lot of truth into it and that's why I was at first attracted to it. But then we also went through so many revisions where I would work with the writer and I go, well, this female character wouldn't work in this way. Let's try to do this. Or also, what is his perspective? But then also when we were on set, you guys would go, I don't think this person would talk like this, so let's change this line. So I think it was just multiple rounds and rounds and rounds of trying to find that. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to ask about that moment where Diego is, it's a long sh shot and you have to, there's a lot going on, but how, how is it to navigate these quiet moments where when we're watching, as the audience, we're watching it, and we're like, I feel everything of what he's feeling. Man, I love that moment. Um, I think it's a combination of both things. It's sad. It's like, you said silence, but there's, there's anything but silence inside. <laughs> you know, everything, he's screaming inside, but the character has this, he's, he's in shock. So here is super noisy, but here is silence. And, and then you have an amazing director who's going to know exactly how to capture that and take the time to you know do that shot that approaches and and boom you have it all there so um that's when magic happens that's that for me that's you you're there you're present and you have a, a director who knows exactly how to capture that and then the audience is there with you yeah. and that's that's the beauty of it that's what we look for in every scene it doesn't happen all the time <laughs> we're always looking yeah. for that i think for that shot specifically too i don't even think you knew that we were just doing a slow zoom on just you because there's four people yeah. talking in the scene and this is without giving it away it's after shit maybe hits the fan of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> our first big plot twist <laughs> and but you were just reacting so much the whole time it allowed me to do that just being present yeah. because all of you guys were just reacting and being there for other people whereas if you weren't you'd have to cut away but True. you let us do that <laughs> to bring it full circle with what I set up at the top. How do you, how did your characters uh, most impact either your psychology or your thinking or philosophy going forward? I'm just curious about that impact it may have had on you. I think, I think that the film does a really wonderful job on touching on the, you know, temptation and seduction and you know this whole syndrome of the grass is greener on the other side and it's you know it, it really is kind of a nod to no it's greener where you water it mm. and you know the relationship that you have nurture that and I think it was it you know there were moments in the script even just like the comfortability of, of the couples you know like uh, talking about you know their sexuality and, and how they pleasure themselves like I feel like it's so difficult sometimes to have those open conversations. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of created this like takeaway of, you know, you should want to talk about these things with your partner. You should want to like just, you know, throw these ideas and beliefs back and forth at e to each other. And, and then simultaneously, you know, at the same time, like I said earlier, I took away a lot of Sin's confidence and mm -hmm. um, just her, her fun, the fun qualities that she has. Yeah. Um, really stuck with me yeah and also if you're just double booked in an airbnb just get the fuck out <laughs> just just go just leave was that a difficult thing to kind of because uh, when we're watching it we we have the knowledge that this is a thriller this is a horror film so it's going to go to some places and these characters are going to get backed into some corners but they're also going to be like well I, you know i want to be nice to the other people and so how do you make that authentic feeling like it is in this film totally i think you have to have characters that feel that way so for example diego's character wants to please people and really be liked and if you came in there with someone who wasn't like that i don't think he'd stick around mm -hmm. as long mm -hmm. or also okay, you're put in this situation, but you can maybe have your hopes and dreams with your career answered, and that makes you stick around. Mm -hmm. So I think there has to be external reasons that make sense for these people. Yes. 